Hey, welcome back. Episode 14, so close to the finish line. I can taste it. Uh, what are we going to get on with today? I've got hatches, hatches for days. Oh, this is going to be a big job and it actually scares me a little bit. Uh, there's four hatches. So there's the storage hatch, the front fridge hatch, the kitchen uh, door hatch, and then the pantry door hatch. So I've got four hatches. Each of those has got four corners, 16 mitres, but everyone has a door with four corners, so another 16 mitres. So I've got to do 32 mitre cuts. Each one of those has a center flex hinge, so I've got to mount four center flex hinges. I've cleared a bit of space here in front of me on my workbench inside the shed, and I put down a bit of ply to make it a nice, flat, clean surface. And I'm just going to be standing here for days, I reckon. I've got three days ahead of me on this long weekend uh, to try and get as much of it done as I can. Uh, some fears that I have about the process, I've had the um, CNC uh, router do the job on the <clears throat> hatch openings for me, so I did it all to a precise measurement. I've got an 18 mil center flex hinge, I've got uh, extrusions that fit around the outside of the composite panel with a certain profile. I've added all that up and allowed for about a two or three mil error factor in the whole thing to, um, you know, in terms of it growing when I assemble it everything. So hopefully that all works. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is I get to the end and the doors are too big for the hatches. So I've got to be conscious of this all the way through. Um, there's a few other complexities, which I'm sure I'll uncover during, along the way, but I've actually already jumped in and uh, had a crack off camera at the first small pantry hatch. And uh, I've just got the door done. I haven't got, actually got the hatch surround on, so that's the next job for today. But I'll just quickly show you that um, hatch surround, uh, hatch door assembly that I've put together already. I'll jump and I'll turn the camera around. Here we are, this is the setup. I cleaned up the whole bench. First time I had a clean bench. Uh, put a bit of ply on top too, just to get a nice surface because it's looking pretty shabby under there. Uh, this is a couple of tools. So mallet for tappity tap on the aluminium profile without damaging it when I'm trying to get the miters to line up. Um, my corking gun, 90 bucks on eBay, that wasn't, I've mentioned it before, but it's been a dream, uh, really good. Pull the trigger, nice even bead, let go of the trigger, completely stop straight away, it's fantastic. Takes the 570ml sausages of Terrison. Uh, lots of different clamps. Um, this is one of the doors I completed earlier, which we'll talk about in a sec, but you clamp across and then clamp in the other direction when I've glued it, and then you can tweak and adjust slightly to get the miters to all line up. It was really useful, so I went and bought two more large ones for that process. Oscillating saw has been good for just knocking off dags and tags that are on the um, fiberglass composite just to get them all neat for the glue. Tape measure, very important. Um, so this is the, this door here is gonna go on that hatch there. It's come out of that opening. Um, so that's, an un, that's obviously an unstarted door. This one's the pantry, which I've um, finished the actual, well not completely finished, but finished the framing of. Um, so that's just the piece of fiberglass composite sitting inside this profile. So that's the profile there. I got this from uh, DIY Caravans who are up in, um, in uh, Queensland. They uh, offer a wider profile. I didn't really want the wide profile if I'm honest, but I was struggling to get anything um, uh, that, I, that, I could, that was better or available. Um, so I ended up going with this and I'm starting to, starting to, um, starting to warm up to it a bit. Anyway, so the process is these get glued on to the door uh, all the way around with mitre cuts. Uh, the idea then, once it's glued on like these ones are, is you can get this bit of unequal angle trim that comes with it. Drops in there, I'm not going to push it in tight because it's bloody hard to get out once it's in, but they'll need to be mitre cut as well and then run all the way around. That's the face you see on the outside, as I said. Uh, then on the inside you get the length, the lengths of these need to be cut and mitered into this profile here. Goes on like that. Um, those bits of unequal angle come in from behind then and stick into the back. Now the point of that is you can't, if it was a U-shaped piece where you could just slide it on like that, it would work for three sides, um, but then you wouldn't be able to get the last bit in because it'd be hitting the sides that are already mounted. So the, the way around that is they come up with this situation, the solution where you put that bit of angle in at the back and it ties it in, makes it strong. That means you can put all four on uh, without hindrance. So yeah, I've got to get all those on. I've got to trim all these up because they're all got to be millimetre perfect. I want to make all these dead flat. I reckon that corner there where it's rounded from, this, from the router blade uh, will need to be cut square. 
so that when these miters come in, you can already see that's not sitting flat and it'll sit away from the edge unless it can go right in there. So, got to tidy all that up. A uh, bit of work in that, obviously. Um, I've got all of these panels cut to measurement where I allowed for the size of the profile. So when you factor that in, you can think there, you're gonna have a panel that comes in and sits there. Um, so there's a gap, there's an, an amount there that had to come out of each of those, which I had to measure and figure out. Um, when they did the CNC cut, they did two runs around so they make the door the right profile size. Uh, what I've also done is complicate this further by putting in a, I'm gonna have a center flex hinge so when that's mounted on the van, I've got to leave um, an 80 mil gap for my hinge. So I've got a plastic PVC Centerflex hinge. I'll show you those when I get to them, but they run along the edge that's going to be hinged. Uh, they're 18 mil, so I had to allow for that. It'll be glued to the top of there and to the top of there and also screwed into that profile. So I had to allow for that. Uh, the other interesting thing I'm going to get to later on, I won't even talk to you about it now because it's a quite a process that I'm going to have to go through, but I want to use these same latches that I used on my box. See there want it to look good so I'm going to spend a lot of time on this. I've got three days ahead of me on a long weekend to try and get it done so I better hook in because this uh, this video is taking me about 15, <laughs> 15 takes to get right. All right, rock on. Jeez, it's good to check stuff before you get too deep. That's the door sitting in the opening and it's a snug fit to the opening, let alone putting extrusion around the outside, which you lose, you know, five mil either side. So it was never going to work. Uh, I'm glad I caught that. No great travesty here. I can just trim five mil off or something, whatever it needs to be, probably 10 mil looking at that. Uh, all off the off two sides, change the slight location of the door slightly. Um, what I'd actually done was when I calculated it, I'd, I'd allowed for these two profiles on either side of this opening to actually butt into each other. Um, so there'd be you know, straight line through there, but I've ended up with a eight mil gap. So I must have got something wrong, four mil wrong, which is probably that piece there, I'd imagine. I don't really understand it. I have to go and look back at the profile drawing that I got all this off on the web when I bought this profile. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad I caught it now because it could have turned out to be a bit of a problem later on. Um, not going to be fun cutting a straight line on there. I think you can do it with a really sharp knife, from what I understand. You just cut through the fiberglass, get that off, and then uh, the foam just comes off quite easily, but I'm not really sure. Reciprocating saw with a nice line drawn is probably good enough. Though. And the beauty of this is when you cut it, it's all going to be hidden, obviously. So it just has to be straight enough to get a decent miter on there. So I think this what, what this tells me is... I will not do the doors. I'll do all of the hatch openings and surrounds and get all of these on all the way around um, and then determine the size of the door from that and I'll just then have to trim the doors down to fit um, the new opening, which is a bit of a pain in the ass because if I got this right, I would have just been gluing instead of cutting. But anyway, them's the brakes. Anyway, setbacks, but... Lucky catch, because it could have got ugly later on if I'd started making all the doors and then have to trim every single hatch opening, which would be much worse. Better get into it. Obviously, just ran, I just buzzed it with a sander at the end as well just to clean it up, make it flat. I think it'll do. Start getting those uh, perimeters in. There it is, uh, cut to the angles. That's the outside perimeter. It's looking okay. Uh, there's a few gaps, but I'll, when I pull it in, I'm sure it'll be fine. To clean all the dags off the saw cut, it leaves a lot of rubble 
on the end, which gets in the way as well. So I've just got to make sure that's all out when I glue it in. See how we go. I worked out pretty good. I've got to jiggle them when I put the uh, glue on, jiggle and clamp. But that's about right. It seems about neat. Got to get the door in, make sure it fits. Got the center flex, center flex hinge cut and put it in and make sure it's all good. I allowed five mil um, error. So hopefully it all fits. Alrighty, time to get some glue on here and get it stuck in. Um, just cleaning up these edges with some this VR10. Just takes all the muck off. I notice when you take the plastic off the outside of these walls, it creates a static and it just draws dust onto it really quickly. And repeatedly it's hard to stop it, so every time we glue we're going to have to give the surface a wipe. A couple of failed attempts there trying to get those uh, the length right or the height right. Just don't know, I ended up cutting one, the first set. I cut a bit off to make them shorter because I thought they were too long and then ended up being way too long and ended up cutting a set that were bigger than the original ones. So I don't really know what happened, but um, they're spot on now, like literally spot on. So I'm hopeful it'll come together with really clean mitres and a perfect gap all the way around the door. Hopeful. Never seems to work out though, but these are all numbered lettered left, right, top, bottom, so they all should just go straight back in the way they came out, hopefully. Powering through them now. That was a joke. I'm not powering through them. It's taking forever. Pretty much all day actually just to get these two done. both on <clears throat> it's getting a bit easier I think uh, I've figured out instead of cutting it at 45 I cut it at 45 and a half degrees and it knocks the back out of the um, that corner which means that the outside touches I don't know if that's a known thing or not but it's working really well so I'm going to keep that up and I also made the hatch door for the kitchen so I've just glued that as you can see, it's dark outside, so it's a bit of a late one tonight, but I wanted to get that set up and glued so in the morning I can pull those clamps off. Unfortunately, the the clamps weren't quite long enough. It was literally like five millimetres too short to do that way, but these cuts all worked out really well, so I didn't need to pull it tight. Um, it's just, we'll just grab the corners with these little clamps and 
and it seems to be uh, pretty good. So I'm going to call it a night, come back to dry glue in the morning and I might even try and chuck a Centiflex hinge on and see what that looks like. Oh, probably not actually. I'll probably do the latches uh, on the bench because it'll be easier doing them horizontally with the router and stuff than it will be doing them hanging. So probably get some latches in the doors and then get them on. Good night. It's the next morning, love coming out and seeing how things have worked out. Just drop that door in and the one at the back as well. All those miters look great. The gaps are all perfect. I'm almost gonna say that I've nailed it on that one, but it's pretty rare for me to do that, so I'll just keep my mouth shut. That one went in all right as well. Onto the fridge, which is a bit more complicated. Yeah, so I'm going to drop it 20 mil, as I thought. So the, underneath here, I don't know if you can see that, there's a small bolt on the bottom. This has a table, built-in table. The kick-ass fridge light has a table on the underside, which is really cool. You can take stuff out of the fridge, you can sit it on the table when you're repacking and so on, which I like a lot. Um, but I've only got from that, there's a bolt under there, a nut and a bolt. 12 mil clearance, but I'm going to make it 10, say it's 10, just for safety factor. Uh, and I need to put this on, which will be 29, but I'm going to say 30 for a safety factor. So I've got 30 as the protrusion from the edge that I cut. And I've got 10 mil there, so I need to remove 20 mil from this edge, and then it should be right. It means that'll sit... Um, five mil up above or probably a bit more eight mil or something above that but because I've got 12 there on clearance it should be right it's a plan anyway things don't always go to plan Okay, decided to give it a go. Found uh, the old drop saw that I had, had an aluminium blade on it already. And so I just uh, ripped this one out of the table saw and chucked it in. So I've got a, it was the same size luckily, so I didn't have to go and get another one. So I've got a 254 mil aluminium blade in there. This thing scares me a lot. It's really loud and bitey. And I uh, don't use it that often for those reasons, I think. Uh, it sounds like a jet engine taken off and can do some serious damage to people. So I'll treat it with a lot of respect. Um, anyway, I've clamped a straight edge because it's uh, the right height for these to slide through. Um, and I can keep them tight against the straight edge, then I should be right and it should be straight. That's the plan anyway. So if this is a success, I'll probably be kicking myself that I didn't do it for every single hatch. But anyway, it's good for the fridge hatch and... Uh, See how we go. there's a bit of feature do a couple more and see what happens that worked all right with the trim down can't really even tell that I've buzzed those probably should have done them all like that anyway we live with it now no turning back got the storage hatch that's all sitting there glued. Didn't need to clamp it because it just all sat together quite neatly. So that's ready to go in there tomorrow when the terrace and sets. And I had to put this one outside because I didn't have another flat area. That's the fridge hatch opening. Looking pretty good. Bit of claret. 
seem to slice my fingers quite a bit on this aluminium. But yeah, it's come along nicely. Been another big day. It's, uh, sun's going down, so I need to eat something. Hey, I had a bit of a fizzer on uh, that last day. I was trying to get this in and I did a lot of recording and tried to get these latches to work on my door hatches. Couldn't get them to work. Uh, luckily didn't drill any holes. I gave up before I butchered anything, which was good. I got online and found some new hatch, new latches that suit 30 mil composite panel, which just make my life a whole lot better. Unfortunately, it won't be key to like to the front box, which is painful, uh, but apart from that, um, they're a much better solution and they look pretty cool and only one per door because they um, they pull it up real tight across the whole span. So we'll wait for those to turn up in the post before we jump in. The Centerflex hinges had a few issues with those as well. They're not quite deep enough for the profile I've discovered now. So I have to trim the edges off them. See there, there's black plastic on my table saw. Uh, that was a pretty easy process. I did I just did one to test it and it worked perfectly. So I'll buzz those and get those done. But I'm gonna park that whole project until Next weekend, hopefully the latches turn up this week and I can get that going. Uh, so this, the rest of the video is gonna be about getting profiles all over the van. That black stuff there you can see is J-mold. It's gotta go on the front walls, uh, the intersection between the walls, sorry. Uh, I've got some aluminum angle that's gotta go underneath along the wall uh, floor intersection and also across the drawer bar. I've gotta check it out around the um, profile there. So a bit of work and all that, need to get it done. Uh, running out of time, uh, I've gotta get it registered within, I think it's nine weeks. Nine weeks I've got ahead of me before the, my deadline lo is looming and uh, work's decided I need to go overseas as well, uh, unfortunately, which means I'm out for a week, which includes two of those weekend days. Uh, so drop a weekend out of my next nine or eight weekends and I'm running short of time. So I made a big list. What absolutely has to be done before registration, what would be nice to be done before registration and what doesn't need to be done before registration. So I'm gonna work from top to bottom and hopefully Start getting them done. Uh, yeah, look, burning time here talking, so let's get into it. So this is J-Mold. Uh, it's, oh, it's got J-Profile, J-Mold, and they call it like, lots of different things, actually. That's the profile shape. I went with an extra wide one. I like the chunkiness of it. Uh, I reckon it'd offer a bit more strength as well because it'll have more surface area contact with the glue. Basically, just uh, you can see there I've cut it at an angle. So it tucks in underneath the pop top and you basically just punch screws in at strategic locations and and fold fold the j j mold progressively down you can just do it by hand uh get it to the profile required and then i tuck a heap of glue behind it uh the terrace 939 and glue it off so i'll get into that i need to then run angle along the front here i've got to check it in around the drill bar uh, angle all the way along the front, uh, the side, sorry. Uh, the J-molds have got to go out the back as well. So there's a bit of work in all that. Then I'll probably bring the pop top in and chuck it on. So we'll get into it. Okay, so the plan here is to dry, uh, screw these off without any glue, get it bent down to the profile, and then pull the screws out and then glue it on. There she is, I unscrewed and I glued it as well, took it off, cut the bottom off and put it back on and screwed it. And I was videoing that, but it didn't video, so I don't know what's happening. Hopefully not another Black Cat episode. Uh, yeah, it's neat, I like it. It gives it a good crisp, clean edge. Pretty easy to do. So I'll just get on and do the other four. I won't film them because it's pretty boring watching me doing that, I imagine, but get them all done. Move on. Wowee, it's really starting to look like a caravan. I need a deck chair so I can sit here and admire it for a few hours, like looking at your colour bond roof. 
Ah, uh, so I put the had my little twenty helpers uh, come in and lift that up onto the roof. So that's just the perimeter of the pop top. There's no panel in it yet, but uh, I can tell my pop top manufacturer who's let me down on a few occasions here has also let me down again with that spray paint. I've just painted the corner with a gloss paint when the rest of it's in a flat. God, they're useless. Seriously. I'd love to name and shame them, but I might get sued, so I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, that, unfortunate that. I don't really know what I'm going to do about it, whether I paint it again or just leave it and live with it and look at it every day and rue the day I engage those people to make it for me. Uh, anyway, j went on really well on the front. Happy with that. I've done one back corner. I've got to do this one. Uh, they were a bit more tricky with that cutaway, trying to get that angles and stuff cut, but just spent a couple of hours on a drop saw. Chopping all these links so that you can see them all lying on the ground, so they're all going to go in these sections. And one going there, one at the rear. I've done every every single bottom profile, except for that one, because it needs to be checked out around the fridge uh, hatch, which is not enough time for today. And I've got to do some profiles that go on the back of these. Got to get them folded though, I think. I'm not really sure what I'm doing there yet. So I'll just start gluing. Cured overnight. They're looking good, holding strong. Got them all done. So I've got one more to do around the fridge slide, which I'll do today. It's a bit of an interesting checkout I have to do. And then I'm going to cork the top of this. It's hidden behind the front box, so not strictly necessary, but I'm going to do it nonetheless. And I bought these on eBay. They're a new concept to me, which is a metal corking tip to put on the gun uh, to run a neat bead. Never used it before, no idea what I'm doing. Uh, gonna give it a shot. I reckon the good place to start is hidden behind the box, so I'll give that a go. And if they work out all right, I'll progress over and do around the guard. Uh, uh, and yeah, I think I'll use masking tape just to save myself. We'll see how this works out. Limited instructions, a few YouTube videos. Instructions in Jinglish suggested that I should uh, put this metal tip onto the nozzle with tape. So I'm doing that. I'm not sure how well that's gonna hold. I guess there won't be much pressure there. Uh, we'll see how that rolls out. And just as a bit of a plug, that tape, I'm not, I'm not sponsored by Henkel at all, but 100 mile an hour tape, if you're gonna build a caravan, you need it. Trust me, it is the god send. Uh, tears, you can tear it off really easily in straight lines. Um, it holds really strong, but it, when you peel it off, it doesn't leave a residue. Uh, it's perfect for putting all these trims and everything on. It just holds everything in place. It's got enough strength to uh, carry some weight as well. Fantastic. Henkel, 100 mile an hour tape. Get on it. All I'm going to say about that is I'm glad I had a practice before I did it on the visible stuff because that's very ordinary. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, after that mildly unsuccessful attempt on the drawbar, I'm uh, just going to jump in and have a crack. What can go wrong, eh? Uh, I don't want to uh, spend too long ruminating over these things, do we? So I'll just uh, jump in and see what happens. Jeez, I almost had it paused there, which was a bit of a bulb. I might have to try and tidy that up with a with a, an icy pole stick. Holy cow, I'm uh, emotionally scarred by what just unfolded then. Oh, that turned into an absolute <laughs> show. <sighs> uh, ended up just getting the last of my wipes. Just ran out, I think it was one left actually, and just took it all back off again because that was a disaster. I bloody knelt in it as well. Got memories of uh, Raptor coating. It took weeks to get that off. I'm sure this will be the same. Anyway, that bit's all right. That bit, not so good. That gap there is quite hard. I couldn't tape to it. I couldn't do anything. So I ended up with a really crap line. So I think I've got the hang of it now. Although I know how to use the corking gun a bit better. So I ended up on this one. It's not too bad. There's a couple of wobbles, but it's much better. I think there's little, there's little bits that stick up. I'll be able to just scrape them off to make it look all perfect. So yeah, pretty happy with that one. Yeah, so that one turned out okay. I've still got to tidy it up a bit, but the other side was a mess. <laughs> we'll get to that in the next episode, I reckon, because we run out of minutes on this one. Uh, stay tuned. Dial in next week for the front box going on. Uh, I'm going to mount that. I've uh, got to do a bit of work down the end of the drawbar. There's uh, chains to put on. I've got to do the Anderson plug um, for the charging cable that goes back to the battery from the car. Uh, what else? Probably some final trims to go on the rear, the trim underneath the um, door down here, underneath the fridge that's got to go on. Uh, roof hopefully goes in, that would be part of that episode I'd imagine. Uh, and I've got to put some parker lights, um, clearance lights on a few spots around the van. And then, geez, we're pretty close to being able to take it and get it registered, which is fairly exciting. Um, yeah, we'll see how that turns out though. Make sure you tune in, uh, subscribe so you see, get the alerts when the videos are coming up and also uh, check out perpetual.transient on Insta, that's my handle, it's uh, got a bit of content there and I'll be posting updates on videos and progress and stuff there throughout the uh, build series as well. So I'll catch you on the rerun, cheers, thanks, bye.